Hello everybody, it's Jen. I'm so excited to be sharing in the Not Too Shabby New Release Hop. This is the card I'm going to be making, but first I'm going to show you the four new stamp sets. This stamp here is called Spring is in the Air, and that's the stamp set I'm using for the card today. Then there is this cute stamp set called Tea Time Buddies. I adore the little critters in the teacups. Then we have the Picnic Fun stamp set as well as the summertime buddy so those are available now in the not too shabby shop so let's get into creating the card today and today i'm going to be doing some simple but creative masking to enhance my images so i'm starting out here stamping the little carrot that i'm going to have in the bunny's hand I'm using some masking paper here. I've already gone ahead and stamped and cut my masks just to cut down on the length of the video. Once I have the carrot down, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my little bunny with the umbrella a couple of times. I'm using my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink as I will be Copic coloring the images today. So that is how I added some fun detail to the hand of our little bunny. Now I'm going to work on the umbrella. So I'm going to have a couple of the carrots to the bottom of the umbrella on the ground. So when you're stamping, you always want to make sure that the images you want to the front, you stamp first, and then remember to mask them off so that you don't get un wanted lines from the other images onto your stamped image. So I'm just using my mask here to help me with placement of this other carrot that will be to the right hand side. Then I can go ahead and stamp that and mask that carrot. And next I want to have my umbrella. So I'm going to stamp the umbrella upside down. And then once I get this image stamped out, I'm going to add a bunch of carrots to the inside of the umbrella. So the scene here is our little bunny is collecting carrots, maybe for a rainy day, to make sure she has enough to snack on. So that's kind of where I was going with this card. So here I've gone ahead and masked the umbrella and I'm going to lay down the two carrots that I want to the front of the umbrella here and making sure to mask them. Then I'm just going to use my stamp block to do the other ones. I do like to keep my paper on my stamp positioning tool, my mini misty here, just because I like how the uh, sponge or the soft part of the insert helps with the stamping. So you can see I moved some of my masks to help me with the rest of the carrots and now I can go ahead and take off the masks. I'm just using my craft pick here to help me lift those up. You do want to make sure you leave a little time for the ink to dry so that the ink doesn't smudge when you're taking off the masks. Then I can peel up this umbrella mask and then I have my images and I just love revealing all that effort you took to stamp and mask your images. So I was really excited about these images and started cutting them out before I colored them. So I'm just going to go around these and leave a white uh, border. And because I got a little scissor happy prior to actually coloring these, I'm just going to add some removable adhesive to the back of them and adhere that to a piece of cardstock. And this will just allow them to stay in place while I do the coloring. So we're on to the coloring and for my carrots, I'm using YR16 as the darkest, Y38 as my midtone, and Y23 as my lightest marker. For the carrots on the ground, I'm gonna have their shadows to the bottom of the carrots and then I'm adding shadows to where the carrots are behind the umbrella and then where any of the carrots are over top of a carrot behind them. I'll add a little bit of shading there as well and then just blending those out with the midtone and the lightest marker. For the carrot tops, I'm using YG17 as my darkest, YG25 as my midtone, and YG01 as the lightest. I decided just to add the darkest colors 
to the bottom of the carrot tops there with where they are closest to the carrots themselves and then just blending that out with the midtone a little bit further leaving the tips for the lightest marker. I wanted to choose a nice bright green for the scene that I'm creating today. So once I get the carrot tops done, I'm going to move on to the pink color combination and I'm using R39 as my darkest, R85 as my midtone, and R81 as the lightest. You're going to see here in a second, once I get the darkest and the uh, darkest midtone, I decide to bring in a fourth marker and I'm going to bring in the R83 as my lightest midtone. I was really trying to do the coloring with only three markers, but I felt like the R85 was too far apart from the R81 and because I was coloring quite a bit of the areas of the umbrella there, I just wanted to have that fourth color. So I started out with the lightest color, just mapping where I want the shadows and then blended that out with the R85. And for this one, usually I add darkest shadows to the outer edges of the umbrella just to get that rounded look, but I decided to change things up and have the darkest shadows to the inside lines of each of those sections of the umbrella. And I do like how that turned out. And then the darkest shadows for her adorable little rain boots are to the back of them, so the straightest part. And then I added a little bit of a shadow where the top of her boot is over top of the taller part of her boot. For the umbrella that's upside down, I'm going to have the darkest shading to the bottom, which is actually the top, just flipped upside down. And then again, adding those darkest shades to the inner lines of the sections on the panels of the umbrella that I'm going to be coloring. I'm going to leave the midsections uh, uncolored. I'm going to do some paper piecing for that. So I'm going to move on now to my white and I'm going to color a white bunny here. For the darkest color, I'm using C5. My midtone is C3, and then I'm also going to bring in the C1 for the lightest color and my colorless blender to blend that out. For the C5, I'm just using that really sparingly underneath where there'd be a dark shadow cast from the umbrella and then behind her little paw there, under her neck and around the umbrella holder? What's the bottom of the umbrella called? <laughs> oh, geez. The bottom of the umbrella. We're just going to call it that for now. And then also there under her arm where the carrot is and her face is kind of leaning sideways would also cast a shadow. So once I had the C5 down, I can blend that out with the C3 and then I will blend that out with the C1. So just work, working my way down those colors and then blending that out with the colorless blender. And my marker was getting a little bit dry here, uh, so it's not blending as much as I would like it to be, so I brought in that C00, and that will just help bring out a little more of that gray around her face, and then help me blend out the rest of those colors, and then I went ahead and refilled my colorless blender. I'm going to add some C1 to her ears and then I'm going to bring the R81 back from coloring uh, the umbrella and I'm going to use that to give her a little pink tone to the insides of her ears, the top part of her paw, and then I'm using the R81 for her cheeks and her nose as well. For her ears and her paw, I did blend that out with a colorless blender. I went super simple for the handle of the umbrella and the top little piece of it. I'm just going to use a one color blend here, so it's not a blend. I'm going to use one color, the C5, and then I can go ahead and use my adhesive eraser to take that removable adhesive off the back of my images. I love this tool. I will link to it and all the other products I used today below. So I'm trying to use up my pattern paper from last Easter. This is Hoppy Easter by Doodlebug. I've gone ahead and stamped out the two umbrellas onto a piece of that floral pattern paper and then I'm going to cut this out on the black line. And once I get those sections cut out, I will go ahead and take my black memento marker and just outline around that. It will give it a really nice finished look. 
and then I can add this on to both of my umbrellas. I just wanted to bring in some spring colors and sometimes the easiest way to do that is with pattern paper. It saves a lot of time and ink. So instead of having to come up with an idea to color that middle section, I just thought it would be fun to bring in the pattern paper. And I will tie this in to the card as well once I get to creating my uh, panel here. So I'm bringing in two of my stitched rectangle dies and I'm going to create a white frame. I guess it would be probably about a half, a half inch frame. And it has the stitch detailing on both sides and I've gone ahead and I've added some foam adhesive to the back of that. I'm going to cut down the same pattern paper that I used for the umbrella for the back of my panel here for my little scene and I cut that down to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I just happened to have this piece of green cardstock in my stash already cut out using a landscape die. And then I just grabbed a piece of this light blue cardstock as well for my sky. So using cardstock is a really simple way to create some really easy backgrounds. I'm just gonna trim that down a little bit and I'm going to have this positioned behind my frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the frame to the scene panel here with my sky and my grass. And then I can go ahead and add some liquid adhesive to the back of that and I'll adhere that to the card panel. I'm gonna try to center that up as much as possible. I just wanted a bit of those flowers to peek out from behind the vocal scene for my card. So go ahead and get that on my card base. This will be a side folding card. And then I'm going to work on putting the images into my little scene here. So I went ahead again and added some foam adhesive to the back of my little bunny. I'm not gonna push down on her just yet. I wanna make sure I get my placement of my other images before I do that. I decided to adhere the umbrella with the carrots just straight down onto the back of the panel there with some liquid adhesive. I did cut out, we'll color and cut out another carrot and I'm going to put that to the right hand side of the card. I'm just going to try to tuck that ever so slightly behind the uh, frame there. So this was kind of an afterthought. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the sentiment. I thought maybe I would use a circle die and then that was too big. So I thought, well, maybe I'll use an oval die. And while I was grabbing that, I saw my swirly cloud dies from Heffy Doodle and thought that would be perfect. And they just happened to fit so perfectly on that background, even though it wasn't planned. So I stamped the sentiment, hello, which is in this stamp set onto one of the clouds and pop that cloud up on some foam tape. Then I cut a couple of the clouds and I'm going to have them behind the frames. And then I'm gonna have one other cloud in full size behind the one where I stamped the sentiment. So it will look like I have three clouds, no, it will look like I have four clouds, but I only cut out three. And so I'm just gonna position this kind of in front of that full-size cloud right by our little bunny and I think that finishes off the scene perfectly. So just some final details. There is a $25 gift certificate up for grabs. All the information for the hop will be below including the next person on the hop. I hope you have a fun time. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you really soon in the next video. Bye!